Hi there, my name is Ryan Zeck. I work for Trimec out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Today I'd like to discuss the differences between Pierce and coincident. Those two relationships cause uh, a lot of confusion for people, so uh, I figured I would walk you through the differences between Pierce and coincident relationships. So in this particular example, what I have is a box that I've extruded, and it actually has some draft on the sides so that it's at an angle. If we look at this particular sketch that is orange here, and we can just go ahead and open that up, go normal two with control eight, what you'll notice is this moves around. In fact, let's go ahead and turn off our dimensions. And what we can do is add a relationship between that corner and this edge, which is at an angle. If we want to add that as a coincident relationship, we can do so. And when we do make it coincident, it can go anywhere along that angled line or that angled edge, but it cannot, um, it's not fully defined at this point. It, it can't go off of that edge, but it is, uh, it isn't fully defined. So let's go ahead and take that coincident off and let's make it pierce. So if we make it pierce, now what you'll see is it does become fully defined. There's only one spot that the edge pierces through this sketch. So think of it as a ice pick piercing through a plane. That ice pick will pierce only through that plane at one spot. So if you do want that to be locked down in that one location, then that's fine. If this edge was straight up and down and it went straight through our sketch, Pierce and Coincident would be exactly the same. Let's talk about fit spline. I've got a sketch here. I'll go ahead and edit the sketch. Let's go ahead and do a revolve on this. And when we do that, it asks me, do I want a non-thin revolution feature, which in this particular case, I do not. I want a thin revolution here. So I'll say no. I confirm my revolve. The one thing that I want to mention here is that it, we do have two faces. So if we do want that to be one solid face for numerous reasons, one of them being machining a cavity of a mold, we can see that that should be maybe one face. We can change that by making a change to our sketch. So if we go back into our sketch and edit that, we can apply a fit spline, what they call a fit spline. And a fit spline is found under tools, spline tools, fit spline. This will allow you to add a spline to the geometry. It can be constrained to that geometry or it can be unconstrained or fixed in place. We can also delete the geometry. If we do delete it, it won't be constrained to the underlying geometry. The existing geometry does change to construction geometry. And now if we rebuild the sketch, you can see that that is one continuous face. I hope you've enjoyed this tip. And until next time, happy designing.